The National Academies of Science, Engineering and Medicine formalizing their guidance for who will get a coronavirus vaccine first once it's approved. Meg Terrell, of course, covers all things vaccine related for us, Meg. Hi, David. Well, who gets a vaccine first? It's the frontline healthcare workers. Uh, the final guidelines for vaccine distribution coming out from the National Academies today. Here's how they break it down into essentially four groups. First, of course, high risk workers in healthcare, uh, first responders. Uh, phase 1B includes high risk individuals with underlying conditions, also older adults. Uh, that's going to cover 5 to 10 percent of the population. Then you get into phase two, which is about 30 to 35 percent of the population. That includes a K through 12 teachers and school staff, as well as critical workers in high-risk settings like the food supply system and public transit, also people in homeless shelters or group homes, and all older adults who don't fit into that phase one category. Finally, for phase three, that's about 40 to 45 percent of the population. That's young adults, children, and workers in industries like colleges and universities, hotels, banks, exercise facilities, and factories that they say are important to the function of society and also has a moderately high risk of exposure. Um, they put young adults in that category as well because they tend to have broader social circles and children, even though they are not yet being included in these vaccine trials. So including them with vaccination is dependent on the timing of those data. Finally, phase four covers everybody else, guys. We talked with uh, Dr. Saad Omer this morning from Yale School of Public Health about how they reached these guidelines. We knew from day one we won't have enough vaccine for everyone from the start. We will eventually, hopefully, get there. Uh, so that demands some thinking uh, that's based on science, that's based on bioethics uh, and other logistical considerations that who comes first. Uh, so doing that in a haphazard way uh, is very counterproductive. Doing it systematically and drawing upon previous experiences previous uh, literature in bio, uh, bioethics, in epidemiology, et cetera, is the way to go. And guys, to Dr. Omer's point about supply, here is what Operation Warp Speed forecasts will be available by the end of 2020. This, of course, all dependent on any of these vaccines getting clearance from the FDA. David? Meg, thank you. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.